In this video, we're going to talk about electric potential energy. Since it's been a while, let's look at how we define potential energy and how we found what it should be from Physics 1. Let's take two blocks connected by a compressed spring, and the blocks are being held where they cannot move. Since the spring is being pushed in, the spring is going to exert a force outward on the blocks. And when a force is exerted on an object, it does work and changes the kinetic energy of the object. But since forces may cancel, there needs to be a net external force to change the kinetic energy of an object. If we release the blocks, the spring force on each block will accelerate them, increasing their kinetic energy, which is always positive. This is how we describe the block's behavior when we define our system to include only the blocks, but not the spring, whether we're looking at one block at a time or both blocks together. The spring would be external to our system, applying that external force. But if we define our system as the blocks and spring, now there are no external forces acting on the system as the spring is internal. When the blocks are released, the blocks still increase in kinetic energy. So how do we explain this increase in kinetic energy without external forces doing work? Well, there must have been energy that was stored when the blocks were compressing the spring. And this energy was transferred from the spring to the blocks and transformed from stored energy to kinetic energy. And we call this stored energy potential energy. Using conservation of energy, we find this change in energy must be equal to minus the work done by these internal interactions in this case, interactions with the spring. The minus sign is there because the stored potential energy must be decreasing as the work is being done or as the kinetic energy is increasing. Now let's look at how we found gravitational potential energy near Earth's surface. We have a mass that is moving upward, and since it is only under the influence of gravity, it is in free fall. The force of gravity, or weight, is acting downward, and the mass moves through a vertical displacement delta y. We can write the work of this constant force by taking the dot product of the force with the displacement. The force will be the weight, delta r will become delta y, and the angle between the force and displacement is 180 degrees, so cosine of 180 degrees gives us minus 1. To find the change of potential energy, we add a minus sign in front of the work and we define the quantity on either side to be the potential energy. In this case, the potential energy is mgy. Now remember, the mass in free fall is also pulling on the Earth with the same amount of force as the Earth is pulling on it. However, the Earth moves through such a small displacement that it is negligible and we can ignore the work done on the Earth. So we say that mgy is the potential energy of the mass above the Earth, but technically potential energy is a property of a system of at least two objects since it comes from internal interactions. In this case, the mass and the Earth make up our system and they interact internally through gravity. Now let's look at a charged particle. In the last example, we looked at the potential energy where gravity, or the gravitational field, was effectively constant near the surface of the Earth. So we'll look at the case of a positively charged particle in a constant electric field by placing it inside a parallel plate capacitor. We'll imagine the positive charge is launched toward the positive plate. The electric field will point to the left from the positive plate to the negative plate, so this is also the direction of the force on the positive charge. We can think of this charge kind of like it's in a type of electric free fall, similar to our mass from before. In this case, the force is equal to the charge times the electric field of the capacitor, and we'll call the displacement delta S. The force is negative because it is to the left, and again, we launch the positive charge to the right. Doing the same as before, we define the potential energy as QES, where S is the distance from the plate on the left, where we'll say the charge has no potential energy. This is the case for a constant electric field, and like before, it is technically the potential energy of the charge and the capacitor plates, where the capacitor plays the role of the Earth from our previous example. Now we'll look at the potential energy of point charges in general. This will work the same as how we find the gravitational potential energy in general between any two masses, but I won't show that here. If we take two positive charges, one at the origin that we'll say is fixed, and another at some initial position, the fixed charge will exert a repulsive force on the second charge and push it away. This force is given by Coulomb's law for point charges. And since this force depends on distance, we must integrate to find the work done, but luckily this is an easy integral to solve. And when we do this, we can define the electric potential energy between two point charges to be K times Q1, Q2 over R. This looks very similar to gravitational potential energy between two masses, just like Coulomb's law looks similar to Newton's law of gravitation. There are some important things to note about electric potential energy. Like the gravitational potential energy between two masses, this potential energy will define to be zero when the charges are infinitely far apart. Otherwise, if R is not zero, there is technically some small amount of force 
and thus some small amount of potential energy of the interacting charges. Second, this is the potential energy of the whole system. Just like with the charge and capacitor, the electric potential energy here is for both charges. And this makes sense. In our example, we were holding one charge fixed. But in reality, if we held two like charges next to each other and then released them, they will both move as the potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. Third, our equation for potential energy will be positive for two like charges and negative for opposite charges. This also makes sense because we typically interpret negative energies for two objects that are bound together, such as the moon and earth or earth and sun for gravity. Opposite charges pull toward each other so they don't escape, while light charges repel and get further and further away trying to escape where they'll have less and less influence on each other. Finally, the electric force is conservative, and that's why we're able to get an electric potential energy. Now let's look at energy diagrams since they are such a useful tool for solving problems. First, we'll look at the case where two positive charges approach each other. We know the charges will repel more and more, slowing down as they get closer, and eventually they will stop, turn around, and move in the other direction. The energy diagram can tell us where this occurs. For convenience, we'll say the charge on the left is going to stop at the origin. The two charges have mostly kinetic energy and little potential energy when they are far away, and their total mechanical energy is constant. As the charges get closer, their kinetic energy is transformed into potential energy until all of their energy is potential. The position where this occurs will be the minimum distance apart they reach. We can also look at the energy diagram for unlike charges. In this case, we'll start with the two charges close together and they will be launched away from each other. Again, they will attract each other, slowing down until they stop and turn around. This means there will be some maximum distance they'll reach before this happens. And like before, this point is when the charge's total mechanical energy is all potential energy. The maximum distance on this diagram and the minimum distance from our previous diagram are called turning points. Also, notice our function for the potential energy here looks just like the one between two like charges from the previous diagram, but it is reflected across the x-axis. This is because the potential energy is negative for opposite charges, which just reflects the function in this way. Now let's look at multiple point charges. We can think of the potential energy as amount of energy or work required to bring each charge from very far away or infinitely far away, where it cannot interact, to its current position. The first charge has no other charges to interact with, so it doesn't require any work or have any potential energy by itself. To bring a second charge to a certain location will require work. At this point, the energy of the system of two charges is given by the potential energy of two point charges that we've just found. But when we bring in a third charge, it will be interacting with both of the existing charges. Every subsequent charge will require an amount of energy that depends on all of the existing charges. This means the total potential energy of the system is obtained by finding the potential energy of each pair of point charges and then adding them up. Now remember, potential energy shows up when we use conservation of energy to solve problems. And there, the only thing that matters is the change in energy. So imagine we move one of the charges holding the others fixed. The potential energy between the charges that remain still does not change. Only the potential energy involving our charge that moved. This means that we really only need to keep up with these and how they change, then we'll get the same answer. This often leads to only calculating the potential energy for interactions involving the charge you're interested in, so you may hear this called the potential energy of a specific charge. And this is okay and gives the same result, but you should be aware of the subtleties. This is a simplification that may help you understand or explain a problem, but keep in mind potential energies are always between at least two objects, or in this case, two charges. As long as you understand the underlying physics, then we can simplify things and use a more convenient language, but don't forget our definitions. Finally, we'll look at the potential energy of an electric dipole with dipole moment P. If we place our dipole in some arbitrary orientation relative to a constant electric field, it will fill a force. The positive pole will be pulled along the direction of the electric field and the negative pole in the opposite direction. This causes a torque or moment. Specifically, this is called a couple moment, when two equal and opposite forces are parallel and act to rotate an object. The dipole will rotate until it aligns with the electric field. While the dipole is at an angle relative to the electric field, it has potential energy, meaning it would require a force doing work to place it in this configuration or rotate it. And if released, this energy would be transformed, causing the dipole to move when it wants to realign with the field. Again, we can use work to find this potential energy. 
Here, the work is being done by the torque of these two forces. And we know the torque on a dipole in an electric field. It's just minus the dipole moment times the electric field times sine of the angle between them, phi. The minus sign here just refers to the torque causing a clockwise rotation. Our dipole will rotate from this initial angle relative to the field to some final angle. The final angle could be zero, but we want to get a more general expression here. Writing the change of potential energy as minus the work done, we can define the potential energy as minus the dipole moment times the electric field times cosine of the angle between them. And this we can also write in terms of a dot product. With that, we have found the electric potential energy for a charged particle in a constant electric field, such as inside a parallel plate capacitor. We found the potential energy of two point charges and a system of many point charges, and finally the potential energy of a dipole. In the next video, we're gonna talk about something similar to electric potential energy, which is the electric potential. So that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.